All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of x to the power of four is equal to 64. So to solve this, I'm gonna first start by rewriting 64 as eight squared. So I get x to the power of x to the power of four is equal to eight squared. Now, I'm gonna rewrite eight squared as the fourth root of eight to the power of four squared, because the fourth root of eight to the power of four is just eight, so this is just eight squared. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n, so it's gonna equal the fourth root of eight to the power of four times two, because the four and two multiply, which is equal to the fourth root of eight to the power of eight, which is the same thing as the fourth root of eight to the power of the fourth root of eight to the power of four, because the fourth root of eight to the power of four is just eight. And this means that x is equal to the fourth root of eight, because it's in the form x to the power of x to the power of four, and x in this case is the fourth root of eight. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of y is equal to y to the power of x. So I wanna find both of the values of x and y. And there could be multiple solutions to this. So, to solve this, I'm gonna first let x, or sorry, I'm gonna let y equal to k times x, k being a constant, so k can be any number. So this means that, going back from here, I have x to the power of kx, I'm substituting kx for y, is equal to kx to the power of x. Now I'm gonna take the square root on both sides. So I get x to the power of kx to the power of one half is equal to kx to the power of x to the power of one half. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So now I get x to the power of kx over two is equal to kx to the power of x over two. Now, I'm gonna take the power of two over x on both sides. So these two cancel out and these two cancel out and I'm left with x to the power of k is equal to k times x. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by x. So these two cancel out and I get x to the power of k over x is equal to k. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So this turns into x to the power of k minus one is equal to k. And now if I take the power of one over k minus one on both sides, these two cancel out and I get x is equal to k to the power of one over k minus one. So this is the value of x. So now remember how y is equal to k times x. So this means that y is equal to k to the power of k over k minus one, because k 
or sorry, x is k to the power of 1 over x, k minus 1. So this times k would just be k to the power of k over k minus 1. Now, remember, k is just a constant. So I'm just going to let k equal to the number 3. So if this is true, then this means that y is equal to 3 to the power of 3 over 3 minus 1, which is 3 to the power of 3 over 2, which is the square root of 3 to the power of three and if this is the value of y then going back y is x to the power of y is equal to y to the power of x so the square root of 3 to the power of 3, sorry, the square root of 3 to the power of the square root of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to the square root of 3 to the power of 3 to the power of x which is equal to three to the power of one over two, which is the square root of three. So we can check if this is true by using the property a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n, meaning these two multiply. So I get the square root of three to the power of the square root of 3 times 3 is equal to the square root of 3 to the power of 3 times square root of 3. So this is these two are equal to each other, meaning our value of x in relationship to y is true. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this. Thank you.